Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners. Welcome back to the last day of the week where we're studying the ABCs of art. Let's do our hello song to start out the day. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Well, today, is the day we study about Vermeer, Johannes Vermeer, and he painted the girl with the pearl earring. I even have a little pin about her, but let's look. Here she is, and I wanted to show you something interesting about her. In those days, they didn't usually do a person in a surprised state, so I practiced because she was just looking forward and then when you see her she turns her face sideways and her mouth is open a little bit to like to say what but they don't know who sat for um, Vermeer when he painted her they knew who sat for um, da Vinci when the Mona Lisa was painted but there's so little known about Vermeer because he was born so long ago let me get my clipboard because I have all of this information that he was born in 1632. So there were no cameras to take pictures of him. And he didn't think he was interesting enough to get a self-portrait where he would paint one of himself. So how did they capture this look of him? Look at his old-fashioned clothes. He has on a beret, but it's a big one. He has a blouse, a fancy one. Men, you usually say, wear a shirt. But when it's lacy and all fancy, they usually called it a blouse. And then he had a velvet jacket on. And look at his curly hair. And his teeth are smiling. But she is not. She's just looked like she was surprised sitting there. And someone said, hey, take a look. And she turned quickly and just said, what? Her hair is underneath this clothing wrap. It's blue and then she has this kind of creamy colored one that has blue at the bottom. And when we make ours, I'm using tissue paper. If you didn't bring tissue paper, I saw a girl make one out of a napkin. So if you have napkins that are blue or creamy colored, that will work. She's wearing a white blouse. I'm wearing a white blouse. She's wearing a golden jacket. I'm wearing a golden jacket. She's wearing a big pearl earring. I'm wearing a big pearl earring. So when you see me back, in, um, instead of looking at the art, you can see how I tried to dress like she is. And let's see what it says. E is for earring. E is for earring worn by this girl. Vermeer painted it to look like a pearl. The funny story about Vermeer when he tried to paint this pearl earring they didn't have pearls this big. They didn't have pearls this big. Pearls costed a lot of money. When people found them and put them in a shop to buy them, it was too much money to buy. So what he did was get a little silver ball and painted it. So when she wore it, it caught the light and you can see just the edge of her earring. The background, he chose black because he wanted her to show up. It wasn't like making a landscape in the background, no. He didn't want trees in the background like Mona Lisa, no. He wanted it to be black so just her face and her shoulders would be seen. When someone does a painting from the shoulders up, it's called the bust of the sitter. And she's sitting there and where the light hits her face and her neck, and her earring and her white shirt really shines up, and so do the folds of her garment. 
or clothing. There's a shadow back here, so you don't see the golden jacket back there very much, but you see the sleeve. And he is mostly known for the way he used light. If you look up other paintings of his, you will notice, you'll say, oh, that's got to be Vermeer. Look how he has the light in the picture. And you look at the girl with the milk jug and you say, oh, that's got to be Vermeer. The light coming in from the window is shining on her. And you look at the other one of the woman at the sewing table and you think, that has got to be Vermeer because the light hits her just right. And so you notice the everyday things that the people are doing. Most of his paintings were people doing daily chores and he made them look like their lives were so great. So we're going to see how we can make this girl with the pearl earring. But let's sing the song about the ABCs of art. Ready? A, B, C, D, E of art. That's the way that we will start. A is for artist, B is for bridge. C is for cat walking on a ridge. D is for dance, earring starts with E. Art and the alphabet, A, B, C. All righty. Yep, we covered everything here. Let's take a look at how we're going to do this art. You know if I get started and go a little too fast for you, you just stop the show and start it again because you can always come back to it. Let's get this table up here. Oh, and I can see that her picture is vertical. So I'm going to stand my paper up. I got out the scraps so that I can get finished with more rather than looking through the box like I have been doing. I'm doing a mixed media sort of today too because I want to ma add a little color to her cheeks and a little pink to her lips. So same thing I'm going to do that we did before and you notice what color I picked because she is really peachy. So I'm going to have her face here and let me get my scissors and measure how big it will be because she is head body. And I only brought this much Let's see, I dropped her eye color. Let me get that up. I only brought this piece. Look how it is. I did this to it. I wadded it up and opened it up. I wadded it up and opened it up and rub-a-dub-dubbed it. I've done this with brown paper bags and the paper on a brown paper bag is much stronger. So if you do this, try not to rip it, but what this does is make it feel as if it is cloth and not paper. I don't even mind that it's wrinkly because it just is soft. And if I want to make her outfit, I think I better do my paper in half again because this is only giving a tiny bit like that. So watch me. I'm going to cut, put my paper in half, the corner and the corner together, and fold it. That way we can have a better size of her body. Oh, that's good. And I'm looking, and right here, I'll have to cut off for the neck of her shirt. So I'm just going to do a little rainbow shape, cut off that corner, and put it here to see if that looks good. And I think it does. I think that's the right size. I'm not going to glue anything just yet, because I want to make sure that I have it the right size. And I know the shirt is going to go here, and here is how I'm measuring it. I look to see that's the neck where her head will come out, but I want her shirt to be here. So maybe it's a good time for me to use my pencil. I will use this one. Oh, I have a good pencil right here with an eraser. So I'm going to make a mark at the end of her jacket and a mark at the end of the neckline. So that way I can make her blouse. So I'll cut it up and I'm leaving that part right there on it so that I can glue it beneath the jacket. I have to cut off the pencil mark so it doesn't look bad. And I can measure it and see, does it look good there? Does it need to go up a little bit? Does it need to go down a little bit? Well, I can see that it needs to go down a little bit so I can make the mark here and cut it off again. So here we go. I'll cut that off and I might even round it a little bit because that was to go by her neck. I'm going to get the glue stick. 
I like to put it on this. And you notice this brown piece, this golden piece, started out as a little rectangle. So if you want to cut your rectangle and get it set. There. Now there's her shirt collar and her jacket. Now I know her back isn't a big old chunk, so I'm going to cut that off a little bit. There. I'll put that there. Now I need to measure how big her face will be. So I think, remember how I taught you? Use your finger to kind of get an idea. An idea. And if you want to, you can use your pencil and do it so lightly so you don't have to erase much. Her neck is down into her shirt, so I really don't have to put a neck in there because we know it's under there. So I'm cutting inside the pencil mark so that you don't see it when I glue it on. And since her face is turning toward us, I need to check and see if this fits right. It does, but I think I might put a little neck on here because it makes her look like she has a little bit of a hunchback. Like maybe she's not sitting up straight. Oh, that looks even better. I'll move this over here. Remember I told you I'm dry fitting? So I'm going to try the neck again. She doesn't have that big of a neck, but I'm going to make it big so I can see how far down in the shirt I want to stick it. Oh, that looks, that makes it better if I have a neck. Okay, I have that. Maybe I'll get my pink. Oh, let me put her pearl earring. I'm going to put a little white paint right there where her earring will go. And you can just cut out a little white circle if you want. But I had my white paint ready. And I'm going to get the pink to give her a rosy cheek and a little bit of her mouth. Now her mouth is open a little bit. And what her lips are are kind of a little mountain. And underneath her other um, bottom lip. So I'm putting this here. And I will put the rosy cheeks on her just by going around in a little circle. And if I don't like the look of the pencil mark, you know I can just reach in and get my water because I use my watercolor pencils and just make it a little bit rosy and make her lips a little bit rosy. I can add my colors. Remember how I made the mistake of making the eyes too big? But I want to show you how I'm going to do her head wrap. I'm going to use this paper and squish it together and put it around her head. And when I get to that edge, I just cut it off. I can use the glue stick because you don't see her hair. And I just put that blue paper on there and put it on here. I can find my white tissue paper and put it down the back as the scarf. Boys and girls, if we don't have time to finish, you know what you do. You keep working on it. And if you take a picture of yourself working on this and send it to me, I would love to see it. And we can send you these books as a thank you to all the people who write to us and say thanks for coming and for joining us. Next week, we'll do more Letters of the Alphabet, boys and girls. Thank you for joining me. See you next week. Have a great weekend. Good for everyone.